I'm making a piece of furniture for my granddaughter's bedroom. It needs to hide a small tumble dryer, have a shelf above, and then some hanging space for clothes. This is the finished result. Now I'm going to show you how I made it. Welcome to Real DIY. I'm using 15mm thick MDF for this, an 8 foot by 4 foot sheet. You can see from my daughter's drawing that it's 600mm deep at the bottom to hide the tumble dryer, and less deep at the top, 400mm, just right for hanging small clothes. I'm using a combination of my track saw for the straight lines and a jigsaw for the curves. I'm not cutting these absolutely tight to the line because I want to trim with my router. Where the track saw doesn't quite reach the end of a cut, I'm finishing it off with a handsaw. Having cut out the left hand side, I can now rotate that around and use it as a template for the other side. This is a rather strange contraption. It's my homemade tilting device that allows me to fix the track onto my workbench. With it, I can hinge the track up and down, enabling me to place a board underneath and cut it at right angles. I can cut multiple pieces really accurately and quickly with this. This is the plywood template that I made whilst off camera. Now I'm lining it up on the underside of the side piece. I shall need to turn it over to use it as the bearing is on the bottom end of the router bit. I took two or three passes, removing a sliver at a time to get that nice smooth curve. I then used the track saw to straighten up the straight edges. Here I'm marking where the shelf's going to be, top and bottom and then the centre line. So here I'm marking the position for those dominoes. About three inches in from either edge and one in the centre. I'm taking my time to cut these accurately. If I'd thought about it, I'd have been better to have clamped on a wooden guide so I could just run the domino machine along that and then I would know that those slots were perfectly lined up. More marking out to do, this time at the top of the sides for the top panel. And surprise, surprise, more dominoes. You could equally well use biscuits, dowels or even screws if you don't mind filling all the holes. The top panel comprises two pieces. Attached to the front edge, there's a small facing piece which will help keep the cupboard rigid. It will also hide a net curtain wire to hide the clothes. The rear back corners of the cupboard are going to need a little cutout to accommodate the skirting board. I put a brace across the back of the cupboard. It's only about 100 millimeters high. This is one end of the piece. Again, I've used dominoes to each end. I'm going to put a white hardball panel into the back of the wardrobe area. With my router, I'm making a rebate for it in the back edges of both the sides, the shelf and the top. I'm going to hang the door with a pair of kitchen cupboard door hinges. Now, some time ago, I made this little mock-up of two pieces. This represents the side panel and this represents the door. This hole is 35 millimeters in diameter, which takes the back of the fitting, and the position of that hole from the leading edge of the door is really important. I've measured this distance, so now I'm going to mark out the door at the top and down here at the bottom. The little piece of masking tape is just to remind me which face the hinge is going on. 
I'm not going to worry about the position of the screw holes yet. I can mark those once I've inset it. Well, I did a little trial with a piece of scrap MDF. I started out using this tungsten carbide bit from Trend. However, you can't use it in a handheld drill. You have to use it in a pillar drill. And the reason is, if you look at it, the cutting surfaces are this straight edge and that edge. There is nothing around the perimeter, nothing here that actually cuts the circumference of the circle. So when you try to use it, as soon as you start drilling, it wants to wander all over the place. It will not stay in one position, so you have to use it in a pillar drill. So unfortunately, this was probably £10 of wasted money. What does work, however, is this from Tool Pack from Tool Station, and I think this was under £3.50. It's got little wings on the side of it, the cutting edge, that will cut the circumference of the circle. Having started the hole with the cheaper bit, I'm now swapping over and putting in the tungsten carbide bit. That's cutting much better. There's no point really measuring where these screw holes are. You might as well line the hinge up with a square and put in pilot holes. This piece of paper is my depth stop. I'm using ricer cutter screws. These are really nice screws, high performance so they say. 3.5 by 16 mil long. But once the hinge is fixed, it's quite important, well critical really, the distance from this edge to the centre line of the 35 mil hole. When the door is fully open like this, you don't want the door edge to catch on the underside of the hinge here. So when that's fully open, there's a minute gap between the door and this part of the hinge. The two aren't interfering with each other. And you know if you've got that lined up properly, if you take the hinge position through the centre here, that is actually in line with the edge of the door. These hinges are particularly nice because they unclip from the base, which is great. Once you've got this fitted to the side of the cabinet, you can offer up the door, slots on here, and with a push, it clips together. Really nice. The hinges I showed you earlier are made by Bloom. They work in exactly the same fashion. Hook the clip onto the base, if I can get it lined up properly, and snap it into position. Bloom hinges, in my opinion, are definitely the best you can get. These are much cheaper, made by Hafel, but perfectly adequate for this job. With the hinges fitted to the door, I can line it up with the right hand side and fix the connecting plates. There needs to be a small gap between the door and the side, and I'm achieving that using my ruler as a spacer. It's pretty much ideal. Now I'm happy with the positioning, I can try a complete dry assembly. It's always a good idea to do a dummy fit before you glue everything together. I noticed I'd made a little mistake with one of these domino slots. I cut the slot in the side panel in the wrong orientation, as you can see. An easy mistake to make, but thankfully easy to fix. I always like to clamp everything up fully before gluing. That way I know I've got enough clamps of the right size, and then they're pretty much preset for gluing up, which speed things along once the glue is applied. With the clamps removed, this is what it looks like. Of course, it's on its back at the moment, so it might look a little strange. I'm using an acrylic primer undercoat. You really don't need to seal the edges with anything else, like sanding sealer, or so-called MDF sealers. You'll need a short head mini roller, one inch brush, and 180 to 220 grit sandpaper. 
I tend to paint the edges first with a brush, finishing off with a very light touch of the roller. This removes brush marks and leaves a finish that will match the sides. Then with the roller I do the remaining surfaces. Using a mini roller you can get a finish that's almost as good as a spray finish once you know how to do it. In an upcoming video I'll show you my foolproof method of painting MDF and how to get that smooth spray finish without using a spray gun. Once I've made that video I'll leave a link below and there will be an on-screen link at the end of this video. Please do check it out. Once dry, I give the first coat a very, very light sand, and I do mean light, extremely light. I only give the edges two rubs with the sandpaper. I sand it in one direction and then back the other way, and that is it. And you must use a really light touch. Did I say that? I call it tickling the surface. That's all it needs. I'll leave it at that, as any more will take off too much paint and there's always the danger of going through back to the MDF, which is not what you want. With that done, I give it a second coat of primer undercoat and again rub down once it's dry. And finally, it gets two top coats of water-based satin finish. I'm sure you've seen quite enough of me painting this. I mean, it is like watching paint dry, isn't it? So I'm gonna crack on, go and do the inside, and I'll see you when it's finished. So there we are, that's it. And this is what it looks like in situ. I think it looks quite good hiding the tumble dryer and providing useful space for those clothes. I fitted a childproof lock on the door to keep inquisitive fingers out. It's tidied up the corner of the bedroom rather well. But the paint finish looks extremely good with a roller and I think you'd be hard pressed to tell that it wasn't sprayed. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please like and subscribe and don't forget to check out my video on painting MDF. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon with another real DIY video. Take care.